Hi everyone. Thank you so much for uh, giving me all those kind of encouragement. And uh, yesterday I was live and uh, was talking about the Varaha Avatar of Lord Vishnu, and we talked about uh, the entire structure, how Varaha Avatar uh, took out few parts of Earth from water towards the surface world, and we digged into the scientific part of it, understood what is high grip understood that this is basically hydra and from hydra the evolution of fish practically happened and then from the fish the evolution happened towards the uh, mother nature towards the uh, surface world which is the kurma avatar and uh, eventually tried to understand a little bit of science behind it wanted to understand the entire structure of moksha and how baikunt look like it was all in bengali so i'll be touching a little bit about uh, baikunt and uh, uh, different kind of moksha in my next live in uh, English for the people who wanted me to explain uh, everything uh, regarding all these spiritual knowledge in English itself. Uh, mainly these kind of uh, request is coming from Europe. So thank you so much Europe for uh, asking me all these details and I understand the kind of uh, uh, eagerness of learning uh, and the crying for knowledge and understanding of peace that you guys are looking for thanks um, once again i'll be touching upon the another avatar of uh, satya yuga of lord vishnu which is nourishing avatar so what happened if you remember last time i was talking about two dhanavs who actually um, two brothers um, one of them who attacked the varaha avatar and the next brother was hiranyakashipu hiranyakashipu got to know about his brother's death that Vishnu killed him with Varaha Avatar. So he started doing enchantment of Lord Brahma and went for a tapasya for a couple of months, years. So years passed by and Indra got to know that Hiranyakashipu is not there in his kingdom. So Indra attacked uh, the entire Dhanava capital and he defeated the Dhanavas. And he um, then saw that uh, there is a pregnant lady and people say that there's a wife of Hiranyakashipu uh, called Kayadhu. So Indra took Kayadhu in his chariot and uh, wanted to put her in some place where nobody can actually find her in. But while he is flying up, Narad Muni came in front of him and said that, please release this lady because the she is pregnant number one number two the son that will took birth will be the devotee of lord vishnu so you better leave um, this lady with me so narada took the lady in his ashrama and there he gave birth to a beautiful child called prahlad because it's narada's ashram and narada is devotee of lord vishnu prahlad uh, eventually got to know all about uh, uh, Lord Vishnu and his uh, details and uh, he became devotee of Lord Vishnu from the childhood itself. When Hiranyakashipu came back, he got boon from Brahma. What he asked for? He asked for immortality. But then Brahma said that if you took birth, then you have to die. Hence, you need to ask for something else. So Hiranyakashipu said that, give me a boon that uh, I'll not be killed, neither in day nor in night. No human, no animal can kill me. Because he remembered that his elder brother was killed by Barha Avatar, which was an animal avatar of Vishnu. So, uh, hence he asked that. And then he said that I, I cannot be killed within room, neither on uh, uh, outside. So, no weapon can kill me. Brahma said, Tathastu. Tathastu means, okay, Taihok, meaning... Let it be. So Hiranyakashipu got that boon, came back to Dhanava's world and he got to know that he has got a child now. So he welcomed the child and mother. Eventually, he understood that this child is a devotee of Vishnu and he hates Vishnu. Hiranyakashipu don't actually like Vishnu because you know the reason. So he got really, really uh, angry and he wanted to kill Prahlad but 
His wife said that this is just a mere child. Don't kill him. It's your child. Hindu Kashyap didn't listen to it. He said that as a king, I must protect my kingdom, and I don't care that um, a person, a son of mine, will actually worship my enemy because he wanted to kill him. Uh, Hindu Kashyap tried multiple different kind of ways of killing his own son, like throwing him out of uh, uh, the mountain. then giving him uh, some kind of uh, food which can kill him giving him venoms but nothing could actually affect prallad he became more and more devoted toward lord vishnu itself eventually uh, hirandakashipu had a sister called holika holika said that uh, my big brother if you remember i got a boon from brahma it's a um, I I got a shawl from Bum Brahma. Shawl means a wrapping element, not a kind of shawl. I got a wrapping element from Brahma that uh, fire cannot do any harm to me. So Holika had that kind of element with her, and she said that let me take Pralad with me inside the burning fire, and Pralad will be dead. So Holika took Pralad in her lap, wrapped that. uh element in her body entered into fire but unfortunately holika got burned prallad came out without even a scratch hence hirandakashu became really really angry he said that you talked about vishnu you say that vishnu is everywhere it is there it is here can you please tell me that if i point out my finger towards that big uh, structure do you feel that vishnu is there prallad as a kid he said yeah he is everywhere he is even inside that uh, big uh, thumb so what he did with a gada hirandakashipu with an anger give a big stroke towards that thumb all of a sudden all of a sudden the exact thumb cracked and an animal came out that animal is half lion half man and he started attacking hirandakashipu there was a big fight and uh, the half lion half man we call himself as nrishingho meanings noro shingho meaning human plus lion is a combination of one character and he said that i will honor lord brahma you said that you will not be killed by a man nor a animal so i'm a half man and a half animal i'm not going to use any kind of weapon i'll be using my nails so he took out hirandakashipu in front of the gate of his his own uh Rajya Sabha, and he put him on his lap and broke his chest with his sharp nails. While doing that, he said that you are not in earth, not in sky. You are in my lap, which is in between. You are not in home. You are not in outside. You are in between that space and time. So here, Hiran the Kashipu, I am killing you for all your sins, and he kills Hiran the Kashipu over there. that narasingha avatar became so angry after killing him that he attacked all the danavas and started scratching them started killing them he didn't stop then he after killing everyone almost everyone he sat on the uh, singhasan of hirandakashipu with an anger he started roaring over there watching this lord brahma sent lord, lord uh, goddess lakshmi to optimize lord Vishnu, Lakshmi came, but in vain. Narasimha didn't stop. Now I'm going to give you two different kind of storyline. In one storyline, Pralad came in front of Narasimha and he started enchanting Vishnu mantra. Narasimha became optimized and he gave boons and kissed the small kid and went off with Vishnu Rupa. In second storyline, which I have found. 
on that particular time even that kid prahlad couldn't calm down narsimha hence each and every god and goddess they started asking lord shiva that help us out lord shiva initially sent his two guards virbhadra and vairab both of them attacked narsimha to optimize and calm, calm down him they couldn't sustain while doing all these kind of attack virbhadra was heavily injured and shiva got really really angry and he understood that he needs to stop the avatar of this vishnu so he took a shape of one of the biggest size like a mountain with 100 hands and a wing and a face of just like narasimha another lion head and attacked narasimha with this attack narasimha became really really um anxious to understand that who is he who is attacking narasimha avatar and he understood that with this fight that this is lord shiva himself so narasimha surrendered himself and became calm down and came in his own roop of lord vishnu and hence he said that now i am calm down i should go back to my own place and prahlad started ruling the dana world in his own way that's the entire story but when we dig a little bit of deeper little bit of deep if you look at the indian culture till date we celebrate a festival called holi which actually came from this holika holika died as a danavi and of course the shawl in today's world is if you look at fire protector people they usually wrap such kind of elements in their body so it was something similar to that but somehow that big fire actually affected her instead of prahlad probably within that fire prahlad wrapped it and holika probably didn't do it uh, maybe she wanted to save the small kid it may happen we don't know uh, what happened inside the fire but ultimately prahlad came out holika died and as a ritual we celebrate as a choti holi before doing the color festival in bengali we celebrate it as nara pura so nara pura is nothing but we create a big fire and put all the fruits or vegetables inside that fire it becomes barbecue so in from the european culture it's basically a barbecue kind of concept okay but it actually came from this holika dahan as a structure oh i am giving you this story just to talk about vishnu puran and giving a structure of narsimha avatar or shiva avatar no i digged a little bit of deeper into this entire uh, story line whether it's a epical story or mythology we don't know we don't know whether it actually happened or not so i call it as probably one of the mythological story maybe not epic wherein ramayana and mahabharata we may call it as a epic because it actually happened but in this story what i have learned so far so good this uh, entire uh, structure if you look at you will find out the same similar kind of animal in egyptian culture it's called sphinx if you have looked at that animal you will find out that there is a face of woman is just opposite face of woman and body of a lion and a wing which is something similar to the shiva's avatar the name of shiva's avatar was sharava okay so sphinx sharava it might happen that the language transcription or translation may affected this structure but somehow in today's egypt you can see this a uh, big structure what happened well it is said that this animal or this creature i would say used to ask questions to uh, people and if they can't give answer it used to kill them and we find this in greek mythology in greek mythology there is a, a beautiful story line with sphinx wherein sphinx is actually asking questions to uh, another mythological character in due course of time definitely i'll be sharing that story why i'm taking this because it's a historical question which actually uh uh uh, uh it's being asked by sphinx to uh, uh the people of thebes well she asked the 
most famous riddle in the history what is that she asks that which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed then two-footed and after that three-footed বাংলায় বলতে গেলে কোন জন্তুটা প্রথমে একই কথা বলে মানে তার ভয়েস একই কিন্তু কোন জন্তুটার প্রথমে চার পায়ে হাঁটে তারপরে দুটো পায়ে হাঁটে তারপর তিনটে পায়ে হাঁটে দ্য অ্যান্সার ইজ হিউম্যান বিং ওয়াই ওয়েন উই টুক বার্থ উই ক্রল দেন উই ওয়াক উইথ আওয়ার টু ফিট অ্যান্ড হোয়েন উই বিকাম ওল্ড উই টেক হেল্প অফ আওয়ার স্টিক দ্যাস দ্য থার্ড লেগ So these are all metaphor but then i digged more about uh, this entire structure well i found that this entire vishnu avatar if you look at this vishnu avatar is basically done in a time of chaturdashi of 14th date of shukla paksha in vaishak month yeah hi everyone to what happened in that particular timeline now i will take you to a part of africa where probably the civilization started it is said that at that particular time each and every year a tribe who don't wear any kind of dress they usually you know roam around on earth as a naked we call them as probably uncivilized people that particular date that particular time they don't eat anything which is raw meat they don't eat anything which is uh, a chopped fruit they from the morning to the late evening don't eat anything wrap their body with leaves and flowers end of the day when sun is gone they start eating which is fresh fruits and vegetables if we look at our culture we are supposed to do the same we as an indian on that time some people because of narsimha avatar on that day they don't eat they fast for the entire day end of the day they take fruits and vegetables why when i dig a little bit deeper i found that on that particular day the bacterial infection on earth becomes much more active because of the condition of moon earth and sun bacteria becomes much more dangerous so if you eat any kind of rotten food or probably if you eat any kind of chopped up fruits or if you eat a meat which is in open air you can be sick motantore in other words if you look at the same the the condition of venus becomes in a different kind of parallel line with earth and i think it's shukra now this shukra is not our planet shukra shukra as a tithi so what happened the same thing is mentioned if you do fasting your internal organs will be relieved it will be optimized now to be very honest if we go deep and deep and digger koshani thank you for saying i uh, duel thank you for coming and asking questions well if you do go, go very very deep we would understand the entire story line is actually telling us two things a understand that god is everywhere it is not in a temple it is not in some books it is not in some maybe in some mountain it is not in some river it is everywhere he vishnu he himself is everywhere he is in in my spectacles he is in my mouth he is in me he is in you he is in everywhere so how do you describe the everywhere part you should become same and similar with this holy being so that you can go for a moksha now for people who wanted to know about moksha yesterday because i did that in bengali i'll be repeating myself uh, but yeah for you moksha are different types one kind of moksha when the soul 
is mixing with Lord Vishnu. That is called second kind of moksha is when the soul stays in Vaikunt. It is called Shalaksha moksha. The third kind of moksha is Swarup moksha where the soul takes the form of Vishnu himself. The fourth kind of uh, moksha is Srishti moksha when the power and wealth of the soul when it goes to Vaikunt becomes like Vishnu. Now what will be the wealth of soul? It is the energy and experience when it is roaming in various different parallel worlds that wealth remains with him or her. And hence if that soul come back, if that soul come back, it may happen that it possesses the earlier life's memories. So there is a small thin line in between Jatishwar and getting moksha. The fifth kind of moksha is Samya moksha. It's called, it's called soul can stay with Vishnu but is just staying with Vishnu. Right? So these are the kind of five different moksha which has been defined by uh, epic and culture. Well, my job for today was basically to describe the uh, another avatar of Vishnu which I started from Satya Yuga. Eventually we will go towards another yuga where we will be more talking about science rather than only stories and that's the kind of clue I always wanted to give all of you and yesterday you learned that how amoeba came in picture when we tried to describe the entire avatar storyline and how life form started that's the way our Indian epics are teaching others how science becomes a part of human life. So it's basically history of humanity rather than we call it as epic or mythology and other this. Right? But the point is how you can become optimized when you look at this Arnarasi Mahavatar, when you look at Prahlad as a storyline. Prahlad never ever shouted. He was just accepting the fact as it is. If his father is shouting, he is throwing things, he is probably giving his venom, whatever is happening. He became calm and quiet, calm and quiet. And he said that in his optimized voice, God is everywhere. The point is as a human being, what we can learn? Learn to love ourself. Learn to understand ourself. Learn the fact that the God is within you, within me. You don't need to run around to find out God. You don't need to go anywhere if you are self-optimized. If you can do yoga, if you can do meditation, if you can be self-optimized, you don't need anything. That's the small thing that we can get from today's story. There is a big depth. I'll be more talking about something relevant related to some other stories which is another fascinating story with Garudas and Nagas. Well, for the audience, let me tell you that Garuda uh, used to be the devotee or rather is a devotee of Lord Vishnu, Bahan of Lord Vishnu, wherein Nagas used to be another kind of race. Uh, in, in some point of time, Garuda wanted to wipe out the entire Naga kingdom. And with that note, we actually started one of our game called Fight of the Legends. We are making Fight of the Legends the beginning. Please wait for the game so that you can play it, enjoy it, learn the entire storyline of Garuda versus Naga in a gamified format so that people can enlighten themselves. Because in today's world, if we talk about all these kind of storylines, I can see the number of audience which is coming. But if you put that in front of a kid and they are playing a game while they are just playing it, they are learning. That's one of the best way that you can do. That's what we do in virtual infocom. So please, please, please keep blessing us, keep loving us and then continue the journey with me, which is a spiritual journey. We call it as the quantum spirituality. Hence, that's the reason I'm digging out all those kind of scientific factors like Amrito, like uh, uh, the boons and a couple of other things. So stay tuned and let's see what happens next day with another live. We'll be discussing much more interesting topic. 
please keep your questions in the comment box so that I can answer you. Thank you so much.